curriculum. That was the primary intent. And uh, that's where like, we wanted to ensure that the way we make chess uh, in schools is compatible with the culture and the educational system that we have. So this design is like a 35 sessions of uh, introductory course for absolute beginners, and there was an intermediate course as well. And people could switch between the two courses then and there. So, and the requirements for the study was like, uh, we need to achieve some uniformity in the study condition, but uh, that's practically impossible to achieve because chess is an individual game. And uh, uh, basically the constraints on the game is actually set by an opponent and it's not like a personal constraint. So we weren't able to like achieve some uniformity in conditions. And uh, basically we had to allow a lot of tolerance because it has to be facilitated by the teachers who do not have experience. So the way we try to uh, organize it is we gave the upper cutoff, that is like the 35 sessions is something that the NIT would manage and the 30 games is something that school teachers would manage so that they could use the free times in the classroom to organize the matches and uh, you know identify the native talent and also like learn by doing. So that was once again standardization cannot be achieved in such an environment. So we had to allow a lot of tolerance and that literally there was a lot of impact of that to my study. And, but that is once again like gives us a lot of randomness so that something that's applicable in this system is applicable um, quite any, anywhere. But once again, like the constraints is just the culture there. And we had a lot of assumptions. One is uh, the presentations that they developed for chess, the demos especially, gave some completeness of chess. Uh, Every research study has a mandate that chess uh, uh, should be introduced at one level and uh, the complexity of the uh, program should increase incrementally. That is something that we couldn't uh, achieve with this program because we wanted to like, have a fixed instruction and uh, we wanted to see if the practice is like uh, performed, the temperament is coming out more than having a, a, you know, a curriculum with a fixed goal in mind and uh, if people are not aligned towards the curriculum, they eventually be, uh, lose out of the system. But our intent was to capture everyone because when we deploy chess in classroom, um, there is an effect of uh, individual difference. But at the same time, we can still enable all the children uh, with their own pace and they can uh, basically by ways of games or by ways of independent study still can be aligned with the system. So the 30 games limit was like the benchmark to which their chess experience was actually measured. So yeah, the caveat is definitely like uh, the flexibility was a problem to us and uh, yeah, and most of the chess was actually conducted during like uh, lunch hours, after school hours. So we could not strictly maintain the control environment uh, because it's, it is actually an open-ended study. So we have to be exploratory and we have to capture everything that's exploratory. So these two things definitely like had some impact towards like doing a regular study that's done in any of the school of education. Statistically, this was the plan. This was the plan that NIT had given me to say that chess impacts, they just wanted to introduce to uh, schools after 30 hours. Actually, we had, a, when we took the statistical results, it was positive, but uh, we, couldn't, we, we couldn't convince ourselves like the impact is so easy with this particular scheme. And uh, we couldn't answer one thing, why we had a statistical correlation. Uh, unless that was there, uh, we felt uh, they, 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 we have not done enough to prove there is something positive about like impact of chess. So this was the rules of engagement in terms of uh, how NIT collected the information and how uh, my organization worked on different expertise and uh, how we had to take different information, collate information. So this was practically uh, 
the game plan. And we did have this challenge. Uh, we did have uh, disagreements. We did have arguments in terms of what we can expect and what we, we shouldn't expect from the program. So this plan uh, had a lot of uh, issues initially. And this, this was the statistical result when we uh, preliminary identified with the 10 percent sample that is like with uh, 1,500 students uh, this we we had like some interesting results uh, this this was what was presented uh, as a midterm to extend the study what we observed was uh, there wasn't any impact in terms of like high scorers or low scorers but people who won the maximum games they always scored well so there was an instinct developed with chess to win, and that particular winning came into studies. This was the only observation that I could make. Apart from this, the other observations were statistically valid, but uh, it was sin convincing. So we had to like look into the other details uh, in which uh, we had to find causal relationship to why this particular result was happening. So I just, we started rethinking. We wanted to like uh, uh, use the questionnaires in a different way to uh, see if something can be data mined in terms of the concepts that we were trying to test with the questionnaires. And is there any relationship between the chess that they were learning and the concepts they were tested? And uh, the instructions that they were presented with and the concepts that they can trigger. and. Uh, such an avalanche effect was what we tried to model in terms of uh, doing the study. So we started to decompose the questionnaire, which was uh, moved from an IQ test to like more of a life learning skill questionnaire. And we started to understand about certain processes. What, so this was basically the commissioning process that uh, we did to see what we can uh, offer in terms of uh, rethinking the whole study to move from statistical validation to uh, more contextual validation. Once this got approved, uh, we had to, to expand the research method, which was, uh, once again, we need to align it to the national curriculum. We had to take uh, the NCERT into consideration, the position paper that uh, the government of India had released, uh, basically to say that this is why the education system is there to do certain functions. And we had to take the guidance of that particular position paper, sorry, uh, position paper into consideration. We had to take a few process flow in terms of sessions that was organized. We need to map certain IQ questions. We need to take the feedback from children, feedback from teachers. Uh, all those things need to be quantified. Then we need to qualify each and every uh, information that has been transacted. This initially it's all the design, but next, how it was delivered, we had to like interrogate most of the teachers and uh, NIT staff and say like what they were doing. So we had to collate everything into one huge frame, which we can do an automated data mining with uh, computer software to say uh, what really came out in terms of teaching. So I'll just, uh, yeah, basically this is what we were trying to uh, organize. We need to understand what are all the problems with the temperament in classrooms. We need to understand the complete learning event. We need to like look into the professional academics what side uh, in terms of what they were doing in the chess world. And we had to, to like constantly compare between the two models. And uh, we had to even analyze the software that was used in terms of uh, whether it provides a unique learning experience for these children. And uh, we used state-of-art data mining techniques. And uh, we also continued with the grounded approach. Whatever we see was only considered as truth. And uh, we had to like evolve with the system. So the approach was more. Uh, in order to corroborate the evidence that chess has an impact. And basically, this was our reflection from the Indian perspective. Uh, because the values and ideals of the curriculum 
uh, chess is best aligned to. That was our understanding in terms of equality, freedom, and autonomy of mind should be demonstrated with every curriculum, uh, whether it is math, science, or social science. This is what is, it is uh, expected. And it should best integrate the capabilities of individuals, which of course chess did with uh, all these six rational attitude, workability, creativity, aesthetics, and knowledge are the parameters that has to be uh, fulfilled. And uh, we have to leverage uh, stage-wise curriculum, which we try to address it in the 35 sessions that we managed. And finally, chess is brilliant in documenting. So that uh, evaluation scheme is something that is mandatory. And uh, we had problems with the evaluation scheme because it's not objective yet. So that is some research that uh, we are doing last five years, but uh, still there's no much of progress there. So these are the independent uh, items uh, that is there when we compare the national curriculum. So I'll just skip to the next stage. So we did a mapping between these two things to observe the complete learning events. And this is one paper that we found that identifies the problems in temperament in children, why students misbehave in classroom. And this was collated. And uh, we tried to see if we can address these problems with chess. And, or basically observe these problems in the classrooms where we had the ICT Blaze classroom. And uh, we took the feedback from the mentors and the uh, teachers. So, and then the temperament in the classroom, how chess facilitates, uh, we just try to like uh, write a word on each thing so that like this is the model based on which we went uh, on observing the classrooms uh, decorum in, in terms of seeing like what proactive behavior is being engaged by the students playing chess. And of course, we had to build a huge data source. So the impact study had my field diary, which I spun it into a report of 120 pages and uh, a written account on each things. And, uh, uh, f there was photographic evidence. Uh, NIT website has uh, the gallery where there are like uh, around 10,000 photographs. And uh, in-depth interview, uh, which NIT has not shared the interview details with me for this presentation, but we will uh, give it to you in short. And these are the other uh, data that we, we went through, collecting the questionnaires for some 3,000 people. That is what we used as example questionnaire, but totally 8,000 people had given some information. Uh, 